dear students earlier you have studied about the era of one party dominance in india and that party was congress which dominated the political scene of india for the first 20 years let's discuss the nature of congress dominance in the first 20 years of indian political scene take example of other countries just like china cuba syria egypt mexico even there one party had been in dominance but the nature of dominance in those countries and nature of dominance in this country are together different reason being that in china cuba and syria there is a constitutional measure for one party dominance only one party is permitted to contest election only one party is there so how can other party come into the scene but in india there is multi party system except congress there are so many other parties nowadays there are so many regional parties so the nature of dominance of one party in other parts of the world is altogether different from the nature of dominance of one party in india initially when congress party was founded in 1885 it was a party of english speaking upper class of the society upper middle class of the society professionals traders and with each and every agitation with each and every civil disobedience movement the base of the congress party widened the congress party accommodated different interests and people with the different viewpoints became the members of this party there were peasants there were industrialists there were rural oriented people urban oriented people there were rich people there were people from the poor strata of the society so it was all inclusive party which was working for the independence of the india initially congress was working as an interest group but later it widened its base and it represented interests of various different groups different section of the society and different viewpoints congress was a party which represented the interests of different sections of the society different areas different regions and it became a mass movement but congress was tolerant to the opposite viewpoint congress represented revolutionaries as well as pacifists congress represented very extremist viewpoints and congress represented very moderate viewpoint congress was the party which accommodated different and divergent viewpoints inclusiveness and compromise were the hallmark of congress dominance so congress which i have said earlier was a rainbow like party which managed its faction in such a way that those different groups remained within the fold of party and worked within the party framework but had a very different viewpoints after independence different viewpoints got shape in the form of different political parties parties like socialist party bhartiya jan sangh communist party of india they all were there to contest and oppose the congress viewpoint but it was the beauty of congress nature that all these parties were given the space and all these party had the freedom to air their viewpoint and to contest the election on the basis of their principles their theory and their philosophy so the all inclusiveness nature of the congress and its wider base in the whole of the country gave its dominance and that dominance was in real sense a dominance because free and fair elections were held everybody had the equal opportunity and equal chance to participate in the elections everybody was given the same facilities as congress was availing so there was nothing discriminatory and in that environment if congress was dominant so it was the dominance in real sense 
as I have told you earlier, that in different countries of this world, this dominance was manipulated. New parties emerged and contested the election. The parties, let us study about them one by one. Let us study about the socialist party. This party was founded by Acharya Narendra. He was a senior congress leader and this group, this faction of the socialist party was working within the congress since 1934. But after independence in 1948, congress amended its constitution to prevent its members from having dual membership of different parties. So, it was a different party now and it started working under the name of socialist party. This party had a different philosophy, different thinking and they were in favor of democratic socialism which made it different from communist party and congress party. Later this party went through many splits and reunions and many a parties of the day just like JDU, RJD, Samajwadi party can trace their roots in this party which was socialist party. Second important party of that time was CPI meaning by communist party of India. This party was inspired by the revolution of Bolsheviks in Russia. So, different groups emerged since 1920 in different parts of the country and from 1935 communist also worked within the framework of congress party. But CPI was a cadre based party, had very well oiled machinery and it adopted violence as a tool to get real freedom. It was of the opinion that the independence given by the British rule was not the real independence. So, after independence they adopted violence as a mean to achieve the real independence and in Andhra Pradesh in Telangana area they used this weapon of violence for their interest. But that was crushed by the army of India and later they decided to contest the first general election of 1952. A. K. Gopalan, S. A. Dange, E. M. S. Namudripad, P. C. Joshi were the top ranking leaders of this party, Communist Party of India and still this party is working within the framework of Indian polity. And this party was also divided on the basis of thinking a few of the leaders who thought and were supporters of Soviet rules, they were separated from this party and got another identity under the name of communist party Marxist that was CPM. Another party that came into existence after independence was Bharatiya Jansang founded by Shri Shama Prasad Mukherjee. Shama Prasad Mukherjee had been a minister in the interim government under the Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. But at that time Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru had given due respect to the opposition and leaders like Shama Prasad Mukherjee, Jaya Prakash Narayan and Ambedkar were very dear to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. So, this was the nature of Congress dominance because they gave respect to the thought, they gave respect to the leaders and they were not discouraging the opposite viewpoint. So, Bharati Jansang had a totally different philosophy, totally different viewpoint. They were in favor of one country, one culture, one nation. This was the philosophy of Bharatiya Jansang. The party was also in favor of reunion of India and Pakistan as a Khand Bharat. And also it was against the concession given on the basis of religious and cultural basis. Bharatiya Jansang was also an advocate for developing of nuclear weapons. So, the thinking line of Bharatiya Jansang was different from the Congress, Communist and Socialists. It was treated like a rightist party 
प्रो कैपिटलिस्ट हिंदूवादी पार्टी बट द लीडर्स ऑफ भारतीय जनसंघ लाइक दीनदयाल उपाध्याय बलराज मधोक एटसेट्रा दे वर प्रोपेगेटिंग दैट भारतीय जनसंघ इज फॉर द यूनिटी ऑफ द कंट्री एंड डिफरेंट रिलीजियस ग्रुप्स डिफरेंट कल्चर ग्रुप्स आर पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ दिस कंट्री एन अदर इंपॉर्टेंट पार्टी विच केम इन टू एग्जिस्टेंस इन नाइनटीन वाज स्वतंत्र पार्टी दिस पार्टी वाज अगेंस्ट द फिलासफी ऑफ कांग्रेस ऑफ द टाइम विच वाज फॉर लैंड सीलिंग टेकिंग और ऑफ ग्रेन्स एंड कोऑपरेटिव फार्मिंग बट द लीडर्स ऑफ स्वतंत्र पार्टी विच वर आल्सो देयर इन द कांग्रेस प्रीवियसली और ऑफ द व्यू पॉइंट्स दैट लैंड सीलिंग इज नॉट फिट फॉर दिस कंट्री कोऑपरेटिव फार्मिंग इज आल्सो नॉट फिट फॉर दिस कंट्री एंड टेकिंग ओवर ऑफ द ग्रेन वाज आल्सो नॉट फिट फॉर दिस कंट्री सो दे हैड ए डिफरेंट व्यू पॉइंट्स दे वर नॉट फॉर लैंड सीलिंग दे अपोज कोऑपरेटिव फार्मिंग and they also opposed state trading so at that time princes of different princely states and the rulers of different princely states cooperated with them joined them because they were also against land sealing because it was harming their interests so this party became a party of princes a party of zamindars a party of rich people which advocated they are leaning towards usa they were against the non alignment policy of india also they thought that this policy is not going to benefit india in any way so they opposed the view point of non alignment and also inclination of indian foreign policy towards ussr they were in favor of having good relations with usa so this party which was founded in 1959 could not get the support of masses and faded away with the passage of time siraj gopalacharya and others were the leaders of this party but this party could not fare well in the elections let's recapitulate the important points of congress dominance after independence there are two important things which should be remembered one it was in the system of multi party system secondly in the environment of free and fair elections then we should also know about the nature of the dominance the nature of dominance of the congress party was not dictatorial it was very democratic so congress dominance was in real sense dominance of the people's choice it was the dominance of people's will so congress party was dominant because of the choice of the people so after this we must also know about the different political parties of that time which contested elections that was cpi communist party of india its philosophy its thinking its view point then leaders of that party second party that was bhartiya jansang we must know its thinking its philosophy how was it different from other political parties third party was socialist party at that time which at one time worked with the congress and within the framework of congress and a party that emerged in 1959 swatantra party how it was different from other parties so if we learn all these points we will be able to fare well in the examination and also we will be able to understand the nature of dominance of the congress party after independence so thank you children thank you very much 